This video will teach you how to add and subtract rational expressions. In order to add and subtract rational expressions, the biggest thing you have to keep in mind is that you must have a common denominator. Multiplying and dividing, it doesn't matter what your numerators and de denominators are, you can always find a way to put those types of fractions together, multiplying or dividing. Adding and subtracting, you have to be a little bit more careful. As you can see at the example at the very top with the algebraic setup, you have to have a common denominator, which in this case is labeled as C. It doesn't matter what your numerators are, but your denominator must be the same. In order to add and subtract rational expressions, you take whatever is in your numerators, you add or subtract those together, and you place that over top the common denominator. So let's take a look here at a couple of really basic examples where the denominators are already in common. So if you look at number one, we have 5 over 9 plus 8 over 9. Since we have a common denominator, there's not a ton we have to do. Our denominator is going to remain 9. All I have to do is add my numerators. 5 plus 8 is 13, and I get an answer of 13 over 9. The same will be held true with um, any denominators that have variables in it. As long as it's the exact same denominator, you can just go ahead and add or subtract. So here I have 7 over 4x plus 3 over 4x. My common denominator is 4x. That's going to stay put. And my numerator, 7 plus 3, is 10. Now, one thing that we're going to see with this is we're always going to try to reduce. No different than with regular fractions. So in this case, if you look carefully here, we can divide a 2 out of each of the numerator and denominator. So the fact that I can take a 2 out leaves me with a more reduced answer of 5 over 2x. In the final example, same idea. There's just a little bit more in my numerators here. I still have a common denominator of x plus 6, so that's going to stay the same. So when you're subtracting or adding, especially with subtraction, you want to make sure everything is affected appropriately. So the fact that I'm subtracting away x plus 4 means I better be subtracting the x and the 4. So I'd have 2x minus x minus 4. If you have any like terms, you obviously can combine them. So 2x minus x is just x minus 4 over x plus 6. And we have ourselves a reduced answer. So it's really easy to add and subtract when the denominators are the same. Where it can get really a uh, little bit trickier, if you will, is when they are not in common. So what we need to take a look at and review is how to find a common denominator. The way that we find common denominators is to find the least common multiple of those denominators. You'll hear me interchange least common multiple, least common denominator throughout this. They both mean the same thing. Basically, what we're looking for are all the pieces of each, new, of each denominator. A lot of times we're going to be factoring things apart. Whatever's missing, we need to make sure it gets applied so that we can add and subtract rational expressions together. So let's take a look at how do we find a least common multiple, a least common denominator, when just given a couple of sets of expressions. So number four, I have x squared minus four and x squared minus three x minus 10. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna factor these apart. I'm gonna start with x squared minus four. That is a difference of squares, so I have x minus two and x plus two. Now I'm gonna factor apart x squared minus three x minus 10. This is one of your regular trinomials. This factors apart into x minus five x plus 2. So if we were finding greatest common factor, we'd say, hey, they have an x plus 2 in common. Awesome. We're done. But least common multiple means we need to make sure everything gets every piece. So we can see in both examples here, they both have a factor of x plus 2. That's great. So we could say part of my LCD, my LCM is x plus 2. But in order to find a common multiple, we need to make sure all factors are involved. So my first expression also had a factor of x minus 2. My second expression had a factor of x minus 5. We're going to need all of those factors in order to create a common multiple, common denominator. So my least common multiple, my least common denominator in this case, is x plus 2 times x minus 2 times x minus 5. The next example is the same idea. We're going to factor the parts, see what factors are there, and see what factors we'd have to apply to the opposing expression in order to make them in common. So we'll start with 3x plus 24. We've got a GCF of 3 with a factor of x plus 8 left over. Here's another difference of squares in x squared minus 64. It's x plus 8, x minus 8. So my common denominator here, if I look, what's in common with both is I have x plus 8, but I also have a factor of 3 
from the first expression and the x minus eight of the second expression. So I need all of those pieces combined to form my least common multiple, which would be three times x plus eight times x minus eight. You'll notice I'm gonna leave these factored apart because once we get into adding and subtracting these fractions, oftentimes it's more beneficial to leave them factored apart, especially in the denominator, um, because sometimes you'll see that things factor apart a lot easier when you already leave them pre-factored, if you will. So part of adding and subtracting fractions, especially when the denominators are different, is we're gonna be doing lots of factoring and we're gonna be putting a lot of pieces together here, a lot of mix and matching to make sure everything is affected appropriately. So let's take a look here at a couple of problems here where we're going to do just that. You can see in both of these problems here, both the addition and subtraction problem, we do not have common denominators. So what we need to do is figure out what would be the common denominator and affect each, of, uh, each fraction appropriately. So number six, we've got denominators of 9x squared and 3x squared plus 3x. So what I'm going to do somewhere here, it doesn't matter how you organize your work here, I'm going to go find the common denominator. So 9x squared doesn't do anything. It's just 9x squared. It's a singular term. You can't really do anything with it. In my second term, uh, in the denominator, I can go ahead and take out a 3x and be left with an x plus 1. So what I need to figure out here is what is the LCD? What can I do to each denominator to make sure they are in common? So let's put all the appropriate pieces together. So let's first look at the numbers that are out front. We have a 3 and a 9. Well, I can easily get from 3 to 9. So the common denominator out of those two numbers would be a 9. Because I can easily get from 3 to 9 by basic multiplication. I also have a loose x squared and an x. Well, again, I can easily get from x to x squared. So I can have an x squared as my common multiple there. Because I can multiply by x and easily work my way to x squared. The last thing I haven't taken care of is that x plus 1. Well, the fact that one of those has it means we need to include it as part of our common denominator. So as we work through these problems here, we need to make sure my common denominator works out to be 9x squared times x plus 1. So what we're going to do now is look at each fraction and say, okay, how can I make the existing denominator turn into the LCD? So let's look at the first fraction here, the 7 over 9x squared. If you look at the denominator, we already have the 9x squared, but it also needs that x plus 1. So what I'm going to do with the first fraction is in order to get that denominator to match, I'm going to multiply by a fraction of x plus 1 over x plus 1. Remember, when you multiply a f by a fraction that has the same thing over top of itself, it's just a fancy way of multiplying by 1. It'll change the look, but it's not going to change the value of the fraction itself. But by, again, by doing so, my denominator will match the LCD that I need. Now let's take a look at the second fraction. The second fraction, when it was broken apart, had 3x times x plus 1. Well, the x plus 1 part matches up, so we don't need to re-multiply by that. But I need to figure out how did the 3x turn into 9x squared. I would need to multiply by another 3x to make this match. So I'm going to copy my original fraction. And again, I'm going to write these with factor denominators because, again, it's going to make just, again, a little bit easier to look at here to make sure all of your pieces match up. To make my denominator match, if I multiply it by a 3x, you'll see that I can get this to turn into a common denominator. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to look at each chunk of the problem here, the first fraction, multiply that together, then the second fraction, and then I should be able to add everything here at the end. So first fraction, I'm going to take... 7 times the x plus 1, make that 7x plus 7. And here is my denominator. And the top, of, or excuse me, in the second fraction, I'm going to take my numerators, multiply them together, put the 3x and the x together, you'll get 3x squared over my common denominator. Now that I have common denominators, now I'm allowed to add my fractions together. So I'm going to do just that and end up with 3x squared plus 7x plus 7 over 9x squared times x plus 1. So again, you have to find the least common denominator in order to take those two fractions, add or subtract them together to put them together. Now, when we get to this point where we haven't added or subtracted, we do want to look at and see, can we simplify anything any further? 
the denominator's already been factored apart. So what we're going to do is look at our new numerator and say, can we factor this further? So here we have a trinomial. So this is a trinomial with an a value greater than 1. So we have to add the 7, the b value, multiply to a times c, which is 3 times 7, 21. You can sit all day long and think of, well, what adds to 7 and multiplies to 21? Nothing does. Uh, sometimes these problems, when you mush them together, you don't have anything more that can factor. And that's okay. If that's the case, we'll leave it alone, box it off, you're done. So there we have my final answer for number 6. Number 7 is the exact same process. So we're going to go ahead and factor apart our denominators, because clearly they're not in common. Figure out what the common denominator should be and affect both fractions appropriately. So, number seven, my denominator, I can take a two out of the denominator, be left with x minus one. Second denominator, that's a trinomial, it'll break apart into x minus three, x minus one. Again, what multiplies to three adds to negative four. So, my LCD, if I look at both denominators here, I see a two, I see an x minus three. I see an x minus 1. That's going to be my LCD. So what I need to do now is look at each fraction and say, okay, what's missing in the denominator? And that's what I'm going to multiply the whole fraction by. So in the first fraction, I'm going to go ahead and copy it, just like we did in the last problem. Again, I recommend copy it with the factor the part denominator. So what's missing from this denominator compared to the LCD is the x minus 3. So that's exactly what I'm going to multiply by. Minus, again, we have negative 2x minus 1 over our factor denominator. So what's missing from this is the 2. So we're going to be multiplying by 2 over 2. So the top, we've got ourselves a little bit of double distribution here. So we'll have x squared minus 3x plus 2x minus 6 all over 2 times x minus 1 times x minus 3. And minus, so the numerator is getting doubled here, so it'd be negative 4x minus 2 over 2 times x minus 1 times x minus 3. So now I'm just going to go ahead and put all my like terms together, and in this case, I'm subtracting. So we want to make sure the subtraction affects both terms after it, okay? So when I do that, I'm going to have an x squared. Let's see, I have negative 3x plus 2x minus negative 4x, so that would be plus 4x here, comes out to a positive 3x after all of that. Negative 6 minus negative 2, so it would be negative 6 plus negative, or excuse me, negative 6 plus 2, when you put that together, comes out to negative 4. All over 2 times x minus 1 times x minus 3. Okay, so again, I'm just combining lots of like terms. You could probably do that in a couple more steps to maybe make it a little easier for you to see visually. But again, I'm just combining everything together like we normally would in a typical expression. Now, I'm going to look at that numerator and say, can I factor this? So this is a little bit easier of a trinomial because the a value is 1. We want to look at and see what multiplies to negative 4 adds to 3. In this case, I can say x plus 4, x minus 1, would work out in this case. And I put that over my denominator. Now you'll notice in this case, now what will happen is, so sometimes they're not factorable at all, you stop. Sometimes you can factor it, and even though you can factor it, it doesn't really do you any good. This is a case where I can factor it, and all of a sudden, I have a little bit of stuff that can cancel. So if you recall back to the lesson on multiplying and dividing and simplifying these fractions in general, if I have the same factor on the top and the bottom, they are going to cancel out, which is going to leave me with a final answer of x plus 4 over 2 times x minus 3. And that is your fully simplified answer. So with this again... It is a little bit longer of a process. You do have to know your factoring skills, but the biggest thing, again, is we need common denominators. So you have to find a common denominator, look at your current denominators, figure out what's missing, apply them to each fraction, and it's just lots of solving, lots of multiplying, lots of adding and subtracting, and just keeping track of your terms. So that's how you go about adding and subtracting rational expressions.